I do want to introduce Russ Yukon. Russ is my counterpart. He's an extension livestock specialist over in north central Iowa. He will be talking about some work that they have been doing in the slatted four facilities, looking at rubber mats and uh, concrete. Uh, as Russ said, we did do a little project uh, looking at rubber mats in a, in a slatted four facility, and we're going to leave that to the end. Uh, basically, got one or two slides on that. So, looking at the time allotted, I went back and looked up some other research. We're going to review that, but before we before we get to that, we can talk just a little bit about deep confinement buildings. Uh, why would we do that? And, you know, I th as I think about it, you're going to make a decision whether you're going to go confinement or some sort of open lot or open lot or shed. Environmental regulations, all that sort of type of thing is going to come, in, come into play. But if we're looking at deep pit confinement, you know, we've been talking about bedding here. we got no bedding. Your manure handling application, uh, if you're got the liquid manure handling uh, uh, ability, uh, whether that's custom or, or yourself, it's probably easier. Uh, the labor to handle the bedding, to handle the manure, that kind of thing, I think is going to be less in the deep pit confinement. Uh, you know, that I, I don't have the numbers to prove that, but I think it's going to be less. You, you know, if we look at any kind of uh, uh, comparison on deep pit confinement, uh, to open lots and that sort of thing. I don't know of any data that is comparing bedded confinement to deep pits as far as performance. There are probably some out there. I don't know about it. Most of the stuff on deep pit confinements was from the 70s. Uh, it's referenced in the uh, Iowa Feedlot Systems Bank. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, basically, it's equal performance to the open lot with shelter. At least that's what we're uh, considering it in the Iowa systems may know more than better confinement. As Robbie mentioned, maybe a little less uh, intake on some of those, but feed efficiency was pretty pretty similar. So why wouldn't you do deep pit, deep pit confinement? Uh, higher investment, uh, I got a question mark there. We are going less square feet per head. Uh, basically, we're building walls to the pit. We got the slats. You know, that's our extra cost in a deep pit confinement. Uh, the supports for the slots as well. But at least the numbers I hear, those are those are higher investment per head buildings. Feet and leg issues, uh, the, you know, the people with the, deep, uh, with the slide uh, facilities have talked about that, welfare in general. We'll spend some more time on that as we go through the research work. Feed intake, uh, Robbie mentioned that. And manure handling. If you don't have the liquid manure handling capability or have a custom, uh, a, a custom operator to do that, that might be an issue you wouldn't go with a deep pit confinement. Well, what about the rubber mats then? You know, a lot of ways to look at this. Uh, everybody that I've talked to that has put rubber mats in, they like them. It's an initial investment. Uh, I don't know whether my numbers are right, might be a little bit lower than that. Uh, but if you take those, uh, you know, look at that over a 10 year life, I don't know if that's the right life of years, but uh, over 10 years, that's 68 cents per head. Uh, that's a, that'd be a fixed cost in my mind. Bedding, I just use $30 a ton. It could be different than that, five pounds a head a day. That's seven and a half cents a head a day. So, you know, you're, you're looking at uh, it's not comparing apples to apples, I realize, because we're probably not going to run a, a solid floor uh, building without bedding. Uh, you're going to use that anyway. You, you have that option on a, on a deep pit slatted building. But it's kind of a trade-off there between bedding and, and the mats. So let's talk about uh, the performance feet leg issues <coughs> when we're using those mats. As I said, kind of went through some of the information that's out there. There's some uh, European data, Ireland, uh, Switzerland, Germany, a couple uh, that uh, from Wisconsin, Purdue, they're, they're basically not, not published stuff. There's a Canadian uh, study that was done, it's a producer feedlot. Uh, a couple of these aren't in the proceedings, most of them are. Uh, the Canadian one's not in there because uh, I couldn't find a, a reference for it. I was able to contact the Folks, and they sent me a, a copy of that, so if you want that, that's fine. I can get it to you. 
Uh, the other ones, the Swiss and the German ones, uh, the German, they didn't have any performance information with that. We'll talk about it here in the talk. Uh, the Switzerland, uh, there were dairy beef or in, in one case, no, no performance information. So, and again, the European stuff, and as well as Wisconsin, Purdue, small pens, small number ahead, and most, in most all of these cases, it's a small number of replications as well. So keep that in mind as we go through these. The way I got these set up, uh, we're going to go through all of them uh, pretty much in this fashion. Uh, where the research was done, what they were looking at, and then just my summary of what, what was in the research paper. They're all listed in your proceedings. If you want to go look at the numbers, uh, feel free or we can talk about that. So uh, the Ag Research Institute in Ireland back in 2000, they had uh, about three trials there. The first one was just looking at preference for type. I don't think this is going to uh, surprise anybody. You know, there was all confinement housing. The cattle preferred the straw bedding on solid concrete and wood shavings on solid concrete, rubber mats over, over concrete slats and then concrete slats. So that was, that was one study. Then they followed up with a couple trials looking at uh, some cattle that were 140 days fed. They looked at cattle performance, cleanliness, carcass, uh, meat quality, uh, same floor types as up, up above, uh, but they didn't have the wood shavings in there. And basically on all those factors, there was no significant difference in those two trials. Another Ireland study, uh, they had two trials, 150 days feeding period, basically performance, hoof lesions, cleanliness. Uh, you can see they had a couple different flooring arrangements there. Uh, Comparing concrete slats, uh, <coughs> slats with wood shavings on top of it, we probably wouldn't do that. But basically, looking at the rubber mats over concrete slats compared to concrete slats. The second one, they had some outside wintering pens, they called it, solid concrete pens, basically. So that first one, the no differences again, no significant difference, except the mat pens had more hoof lesions, okay, but they didn't see any lameness in the cattle. They did some pretty detailed work looking at looking at the hooves of the cattle. Uh, in trial two, those outside wintering pens had higher feed, feed intake. They had three different types of mats in there. The, one of those types and the outside wintering pens had higher gain. And one mat type uh, improved conversions, but again, a little, a little more hoof lesions on the mats, but no lameness observed in, in those. So might not be quite what you'd expect. Here's the Germany uh, trial. Uh, one of the things that's interesting in this one, they had the concrete slats, they had rubber slats, then they had a combination pen, they called it, that basically covered in half with the rubber slats. And they looked at the cattle preference in the combination pens, behavior, skin lesions, claw hoof disorders, <coughs> disorders were, were monitored through the feeding period. In those combination pens, at certain times, they looked at where cattle were laying, where they were standing. The cattle preferred the rubber mats. The other thing they were looking at behavior is how long these cattle laid down and how often they got up and down, okay? So longer periods of lying on the concrete slats. These were cattle that were going from 15 months uh, up to 18 months of age. So uh, after they got a little older, they need, needed to they laid down for a longer period of time on the concrete slats, and they looked at how long it took them to get up and down also. As they got older, I guess that's the case for all of us. It takes us all a little longer to get up and down, but on concrete slats compared to the rubber mats, it was, it was a longer period of time. In this case, the more of the skin lesions on the concrete slats, more claw hoofs on, on the rubber mats again here, and more joint swelling on the, on the concrete slats. That's the knees, knees and the hawks that they were looking at. Okay, here's a, here's a Swedish one. We'll kind of go through these pretty fast. It's pretty much the same story as we go through here. Uh, these were dairy beef bowls, concrete slats, rubber slats, rubber mats over slats. Uh, again, longer line periods on the concrete slats, more hoof sole and white line hemorrhages on concrete slats, but more Heel horn, heel horn erosion on the on the rubber slats and rubber mats. The rubber slats were actually 
slats made out of rubber, as I understand it, and more joint swelling on the concrete slats again. And if you're going through and read these papers, they do a pretty detailed explanation of what they were looking for in the, on the hooves and, and the different types of hemorrhages and erosion they were looking at. Uh, I am not the best one to explain that. There's probably a lot better people that could explain that than me. So but that, that's the conclusions that they were reaching in that particular paper. Here's another Swedish one. Uh, <coughs> Basically, oh, this is a, this is the same one. They did have some uh, other performance information there. Uh, here on the performance stuff, the last point there, the rubber mats, rubber slats had higher gain in their first feeding period. Uh, you know, that's a little bit of a surprise to me why initially they'd have higher gain. I would think it might be toward the end of the feeding period, but they found that was uh, they had a significant effect there in that first feeding period on gain. But the other performance differences uh, uh, were, were similar and no significant difference. Here's another Switzerland, Switzerland study where they looked at 17 different farms. Again, comparing similar floor types here, solid bedded floor. Uh, they collected data on feet and leg lesions, hock swelling, cleanliness. This is one where they didn't have any performance information. The bedded floor, bedded solid floor had the least lesions and swelling. Concrete slats had the most, the rubber mats, and then they have some separate areas they called lying uh, areas or cubicles. Uh, those, those were in between with the rubber mats. Okay, here's Purdue. Uh, this wasn't published, it was an abstract that was uh, at the 2009 animal science meetings. Uh, they were looking at performance, feet and leg issues, behavior, and cleanliness, again, with the sol uh, solid rubber mat or the rubber mats over concrete slats or concrete slats. Only 84 days on feed here. Again, no significant performance differences, but they did see the, the feet and leg issues that were less on the rubber mats. They looked at the behavior stuff where the cattle were getting up, up and down more often on rubber mats. Uh, mats were dirtier when they looked at the floor, but the cattle weren't any different in cleanliness. Uh, Wisconsin, uh, they've done about three trials and they're continuing to do some. My understanding is they're looking to publish that data next year sometime. Uh, but in this one, they did a, a preference study, uh, kind of a two-phase type deal. They looked at uh, the preference behavior cleanliness. Uh, uh, the 18-day period was looking at preference, then a 14-day period where they where they shut the gate in between the the rubber pin and the and the concrete slat, and they looked at behavior and cleanliness. And then they did a, to a couple of short feeding periods, uh, two trials on be uh, performance behavior and feet and leg issues. So again, the cattle preferred the rubber mats where they did the preference. They spent less total time lying down, but they were up and, up and down more frequently on the mats. Neon's hawk swelling, less on rubber mats. In this case, they did see some improved intake gain and feed efficiency for the period measured, and no difference in cattle cleanliness, cleanliness again. And that's just a picture. You can see what I'm talking about on the small pen size. And, and the other thing in, in their facility there, they kind of got those waffle slats, which are a little different than most of us would be used to. Uh, this is a, uh, the uh, Canadian study, uh, commercial feedlot up there. Uh, the Ministry of Ag, Food and Rural Affairs partnered with Ontario Cattlemen. At least I couldn't find this published anywhere, so I, I just got a hold of them and they sent me a copy of it. Uh, basically, on a commercial operation there, uh, they had two pens of mats, two pens of slats. They ran three turns in the study. They were all heifers, about 80 head per pen. And in those three turns, they were on feed from 125 to 152 days. In this case, they did weigh them every 28 days. Uh, so again, overall, there was no difference in performance. Uh, that was their conclusion as far as looking at statistics. Except that first 28-day period, they did see an improved gain on, on mats in, the, in that particular period. They looked at the uh, cattle pulled from the mats for feet and leg issues. You look at those numbers, that, that looks too high even on the rubber mats to me. Uh, but you can see quite a difference between the rubber mats and the concrete. 
And then they also reported a, a difference in the percent that were removed from the pen, marketed early or didn't get marketed uh, with their pen mates, but they didn't really talk about what the, st what the cause of that was. Uh, the cattle on mat mats were slightly cleaner, no difference in dressing percentage uh, between the mats and the slots. And we'll finish up with this one. This is the one I've been working with. Uh, uh, Summit Farms is down in Alden, Iowa. Uh, they were, they've had uh, confinement barns for beef for about eight years. This one, they were building a couple more in 2011. Uh, talking to them, they wanted to try some mats, and I guess we uh, kind of conferred, and they they were thinking about running to trial, so we we partnered with them. They did most of the most of the work, most of the record keeping. Uh, three types of mats uh, that they were looking at. You can, I think maybe you can see the setup over there. Don't think my arrow is working here either. Oh, here we go. So we, you can see, we had a mat, different kind of mat different kind of mat and a concrete pen. That's one block. Then we had another block here, another block here and the two barns. That's how it was kind of set up. So we started this in 2012, or uh, fall of 2011. Uh, there were 140 head pens, so a block took 560 head of cattle. I was wondering about the, the uh, soundness of that. And we were hoping to have at least three turns through all three blocks and have nine replications. Well, up to date, we've got five reps. And you can see the differences there. Actually, that's in your proceedings again. Uh, again, we just don't have enough replications to say those differences are significant. Uh, but you can see a trend there for um, gain, feed efficiency, feed intake uh, in favor of the rubber mats. On three of those replications, we, we did get them to uh, look at the uh, poles for mechanical reasons, feet and leg reasons. Uh, we had 5.9 uh, average on the concrete slats and 1.8 on the rubber mats. Uh, we haven't analyzed that statistically. Those numbers are in the performance numbers up there. Um, so the other thing, I'm just not sure we had that recorded uh, totally right what the what the number of poles was, but, th but that was the raw numbers that I'm just recording there to you. Uh, some f folks from Vet Med down at Iowa State have got involved, definitely interested in the feet and leg issues, animal welfare. Uh, they're doing a lot on behavior, gait scoring, uh, slip and fall data uh, that's currently being analyzed. <clears throat> and just this summer, at the end of the summer, what they've done, uh, you can see back in that previous slide, uh, there was 10 pens per barn there, and we were, so 20 pens, we were taking up, uh, I guess, 12 of those. The other eight pens, what they've done then is installed mats on half of the pen surface. So we haven't done anything with that, but that's, a, that's kind of one of the things they decided to do on their own. So what about a summary here, um, you know? Cattle prefer straw bedding on solid floor over rubber mats over concrete slats. You know, there's a couple ones that's, that they looked at preference, so they definitely prefer rubber mats over concrete slats, and in the one they, they also preferred the straw bedding. Rubber mats have less lesions on legs, swelling of joints, and most hoof issues versus concrete slats. Certainly a trend that performance has improved on rubber mats, but in most cases, no significant differences. In a couple of those studies, we did see that any performance impact, in this case gain, uh, seemed to be early in the feeding period. Again, I, whether that's kind of a, where the cattle are coming from, moved into the pens, uh, if that's an issue there, I, I don't really know, but uh, it's certainly something that's kind of interesting. And then the sim similar in cleanliness uh, on the cattle uh, bud scoring, if you will. So I have some other questions there. I'm sure you do too, <laughs> but I'll just leave those up there. Uh, one of the things I've noticed when looking at these, it seems like on the rubber mats, there's just a little bit more uh, moisture on those rubber, rubber slats than there are in the concrete slats when you compare them on the same day. They're, they're not always uh, wet, uh, they're not always wet. Some cases they're dry, it kind of depends on the, on the day and the evaporation temperature. 
And I just, you know, I don't think it's a, a, a big deal as far as a cattle comfort. Uh, I know some companies have done some friction tests and, and those comes out high, but that's on the dry mats, so we get, get the moisture and manure on them. Uh, trying to figure out a way to really mimic what the, what the hoof is and how it interacts with that manure and, and moisture on the mats, but I haven't been able to do that yet. So uh, <clears throat> I guess I'll just stop there because we're probably getting close to where we need to wrap up, right, Beth? Okay, so questions? I just made a comment there. A year ago, we ran a test on rubber mats and, and slats, and we got two tenths of a pound every daily gain, uh, and we got two, per, two tenths of a pound feed conversion. We had four pens, two controls, two. They were exactly, each one, the difference was the same. The one thing that we've noticed on the rubber mats, they're going to be wetter on top, like your study shows, Cattle do not sleep, slip as much. They get up a lot easier. And I find, and I've really been monitoring this for three years, and the cattle on the rubber mats will probably lay down 75% more than they did when they were on the top tree. I'm not selling rubber mats. <laughs> this is, Mr. P. Mats. Howard's comment, they've got a slatted barn. That was a 70s style barn, right, that you put the mats in? Yeah. Old, old slatted barn, they put mats in. They ran a trial with two pans of mats, two pans of slats, two tenths of a pound improvement in feed conversion and on daily gain. Uh, Howard, what time of year was that? Just out of curiosity. This was the feeding period through the winter. The cattle went in in uh, the fall. October and uh, they came off of the test probably March, thereabouts. We got the actual sheep if somebody wants it. Yeah, the thing, the thing I noticed, you know, you mentioned the cattle don't slip. They, they slip, but they recover a lot faster. Uh, and the other thing, it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges, because those cattle on the slats, they're, they're moving very slow. The ca cattle on the mats are moving faster, and, you know, when, at, at least when you're walking through them. And uh, they, uh, they tend to have a little bit more momentum, and then they slip a little bit. So. I will, you will see on mats, you will see as I, 75, 80% of the cattle will be laying down at one time, and you never saw that on top. That high percent. Okay. Well, one more or not? Yes, sir. Did you see a difference uh, in hairy heel wart prevalency in bullets that have mats? Yeah, I don't remember which <clears throat> which study it was. Uh, oh, yeah, hairy heel wart. Did we see a difference in the one we're looking at? We, we they haven't had that problem. One of the studies they did mention that, and they were didn't identify the main cause, but they were thinking it was po possibly the moisture on the mats. Okay, we are just about. Do we have another burning question for the panel? Somebody that didn't get their question really answered. Okay, if not, I am going to thank our panelists. Let's put your hands together and, and 